Okay, welcome everybody to this year's slightly different cognitive psychology lecture. So not in the on-campus lecture theaters, but instead uh, at my home. You can see so that you can't see the mess behind me. I just put up a little curtain. So don't worry, I hope it doesn't come down during our session here. Okay, so my name is Andre Zamaitat. And as you can probably hear from my accent, I'm from Germany originally, but I have been here at Brunel now for more than seven years teaching that module. So um, you can find my email address here and office hours. It's all fluent at the moment. Best thing, just email me. Um, and yeah, my room used to be here when I would be in the office and work there. Uh, note this module is now PY2701 for the undergraduates or PY5701 for the postgraduate students. And um, you, I will show you later, you can use some stuff from previous years. And so just know that this module used to be called PY2025. So this is basically the same module. Okay. So let's see what we are going to do today or this week, let's say. So um, I will split this year's, uh, this week's lecture into four different parts. The first part is about organizational preliminary, pre preliminaries. And then I will give you in the next part, introduction to cognitive psychology. Then in another part, I will talk about experimentation as the basis of uh, how we get data in cognitive psychology. And finally, as the last part for this week, it will be frameworks for explaining cognition. Okay, let's start with the organizational preliminaries. Okay, so first of all, the lecture materials. Um, you can see on BBL, I have put up the slides from last year, but they are basically the same as this year. They are a little bit adjusted. Let me put down the camera a little bit so that you can see. Uh, they're a little bit adjusted, um, but you can totally use them and they are, of all the different video parts, they are all in one big PowerPoint, basically. Okay, so that we can find them on Blackboard Learn to download. They are available before each lecture and because I don't change much except for a typo here and there, uh, you can already have a look at all the slides of the whole module. Okay, then um, there are video recordings of the lectures. Of course, this one you're just watching. But in addition to that, I used to uh, use a camcorder to record my uh, lectures in first year in 2015. And this is a little bit more traditional teaching style. So I'm in front of the class and talk the whole time and pretty much go through the textbook step by step. So it's a lot of content and not very interactive. It, you may say it's a bit more boring, but it's a bit more um, content, which I convey here. But then in 2006, 6, 17, I changed my lectures and they become more interactive. So there is like poll everywhere stuff and so forth, which unfortunately we can't do really this, this year round. But um, yeah, so they may be a little bit more interesting and entertaining to watch. Uh, have a look, whatever you prefer. The core content required for the assessments is presented in all different ways I present or I offer you to, to consume the lectures, either this year's Panoptos, the YouTube, no matter from which year, and also last year's or the Panopto recordings from 2018. However, they are a little bit on and off with the sound quality because of uh, technical problems in the lecture theater. So if you go to BBL and go to the uh, Panopto recordings bit, then you will see that in there, there is a subfolder called Panopto 2018 recordings. And again, you can have a look already at all topics right from the start, from now on, from the whole term. Okay, so on YouTube, you just search for my name or you follow that link. This is the short version of the link. And if you then click on playlists, uh, you will see uh, the different years from 2017 or 2015. I think there's one lecture from 2014, which I haven't repeated in 15, which went into the um, into the history of cognitive psychology in much more depth than I do nowadays. 
Okay, so, um, yeah, I thought some maybe introductory words about myself. So, as I said, my name is Andre Zameitart, and I am uh, what is called a reader in psychology. And, yeah, um, this is my little family. Uh, the picture is a little bit older, so the kids are bigger now, uh, which means it's also at these current times can be quite challenging with like homeschooling and stuff. Um, so, but uh, you may have heard that university staff is key workers, so my wife is working in the area of teaching as well. So they're at school now. Luckily, their school isn't so overrun with key worker children. Um, yeah, but it was a fun summer with everybody at home for month and month and um, yeah, I do live um, not directly in Uxbridge, a little bit further away and so it takes me at the moment quite a bit of commuting, which is not too bad, although I do miss coming on campus to be honest and, and seeing students and, and lecturing in person is much more... Um, yeah, I like it much better than this interactive format, just staring on the screen and, and just talking to a screen. My current research, where I'm coming from, so I am I am a cognitive psychologist by training and also cognitive neuroscience is what I do. So I'm interested in higher level control of actions. Um, so not just, you know, there is a beep and you press a button, but more complex actions. So you want to prepare a dinner for tonight or something like that. So you really have to plan this in advance, you have to do multiple things at the same time. And this is actually my specific focus, multitasking. That's where I'm interested in. And brain imaging, fMRI is one of the main methods I'm using. Nowadays a lot of behavioral research as well. And, and this is such a brain imaging machine and, and the typical images you get out of that. Okay, so that's a little bit background on myself. Uh, the essential reading, as you probably have seen on the reading list, is this textbook. It's by Fernand Gobet, who used to be actually teaching this module here at Brunel until, I think, 2012, then he left. And uh, But we still use this textbook. It is actually a quite nice and thin textbook, so it's not too big and too tedious to work through. There's not too much detailed things which we don't need for this entry-level cognitive psychology course, so it's, it's a really good balance. Um, this textbook actually has uh, a companion website, if you follow that link here, and there you can select a chapter and you can answer multiple choice quizzes. So just to check your learning, um, this is quite a nice thing. So this is how it looks like. It's a little bit hidden here at the top left. You first have to select a chapter before you see actually um, the questions. So after you have worked through the chapter and had the lecture here, you can do them to see how it goes. Okay, um, if for some reason you don't have access to the uh, textbook or you want prefer another textbook or you didn't understand something properly, I have to say that in general cognitive psychology is pretty standardized, let's say. so. Overall, textbooks don't differ too much. They don't differ in exactly what theories they present and, and, and how, much de how much they go into detail, but the key messages about the theories and so forth, they are pretty comparable across textbooks. So um, if you want to go more into depth, it's the iSync and Keen, it's much bigger, and what, what's nice is they also make a lot of links to neuropsychology, neuroscience and these things, while the Gobe book is really cognitive psychology. Or a quick revision guide is the Ling and Caitlin from 2012, Cognitive Psychology but most textbooks will be fine to, to use to prepare uh, or to, to go along with the course. Yeah, there is, when you go to Blackboard Learn, you will see um, there is like a little subfolder which is called Additional Reading, I think, and so for each week that you will find at least one, sometimes more than one, key paper, which is an original journal article on the topic of the week. And often it's like um, 
one of the uh, where uh, well-renowned scientists first proposed their theory uh, and the theory then has become very big or ve a very catchy experiment from the topic we talk about. And so it's a really good practice to, to go into depth, to learn how to read and, and understand uh, primary literature. Um, but I really need to stress they are not required for the lecture or the assessment. So they're really optional. They are just aimed to train your reading of primary literature. They are for those of you who may be really interested in cognitive psychology cognitive psychology and want to know more so they deepen your understanding and you get an idea about how is it when you really go to the border of, of knowledge so these articles they explore that's what we know currently and we go a step beyond with this paper the assessment and um, you may be aware, so there are two cohorts of students in this course. One are the undergraduate students, uh, and their module code is PY2701. And we have the postgraduate students uh, from the MSc Psychological Science here as well. And their module code is PY5801, the assessment code. And um, your assessment uh, will be, uh, so it's postgraduate students, that you will have to answer two essay questions on the topics we cover here. And these essay questions will be released four to six weeks before the uh, exam or, or submission deadline. And it counts 45% towards the PY5801 grade. 55% is the biological psychology essay. Now, at the moment, it's not 100% clear whether it will be a 90-minute scene exam, as it has been in last years. And scene exam means you will get the exam questions before, and you can prepare for the exam. But you actually would have to come into the exam hall and write the exam in the exam hall. However, of course, due to COVID, we had to change it this year. So instead of that, we just had a coursework essay, same essay questions, but you just prepare it at home and then submit it on WiseFlow instead of coming on campus. It's very likely that it will be again like this this year, but I just don't know yet. I will let you know in advance. The point is you can always prepare for the assessment. So even if we do an exam, it's not really that that anxiety provoking or stressful. Okay, so the assessment for PY2801 and uh, this is again for the undergraduate students now and um, it's again a combined synoptic assessment with uh, PY, uh, with the biological psychology module. So um, you may have learned about this, so the PY2701, which we are doing here, or 5701, are study blocks. Same for cognitive psychology, P, uh, sorry, biological PY2704, I think, and 5704. Um, so these blocks technically in the administration of the university are just to study. But the assessment is then in these blocks PY2801 and 5801. So when you look for assessment related information, you will find that on the PY2801 BBL page. There's an extra BBL shell, BBL page for the assessment. Same for the postgraduates. Okay, so how does that assessment look like for the undergraduates? And we started it last year for the first time and it went quite well. So we keep it that format. However, it's a little bit more challenging now with COVID parts of that, as you will see. And um, if you wonder, Bianca and Annie in biological psychology, they will probably also explain this to you. And so that you don't get confused, we are both explaining the same thing. So this is one assessment you have to do for cognitive and biological, but we thought we both explain it. So because sometimes it can be just helpful to hear the same things in different words. So, but don't get confused. This is just one assessment. PY2801. Okay, so the first part, so to say, of this assessment is that <clears throat> you will have to submit four essays, which are each 500 words, and are basically drafts of proper essays, and you will have to submit them on BBL, not on WiseFlow. 
all the details will be on, on the assessment page of PY2801. So roughly every two to three weeks you will have to submit such an essay. And this essay um, is to be considered really like a draft for that essay question. So you will have in total four different essay questions. And in this week where you have to submit it, we will also offer um, a tutorial or seminar session. And this will be a little bit, your cohort will be split up a little bit, so you will have to see when exactly your session is. And it used to be on campus, obviously, but this year it's online, but it's a synchronous activity. So we meet really at this point in time. I think it's Thursday afternoon, most of people, and there's one more session on Friday afternoon. You have to see which, which one you're in. And we will have four of those in the week where you have to submit your drafts. And in these seminar groups, in smaller groups of, depending on how many people attend, let's say five to ten people, you will be in smaller breakout rooms and you can discuss what's a good strategy of how to write the essay. And you know, stuff like, oh, did you discuss that study or did you include this study and how did you start? Stuff like that. You can just discuss among each other to provide each other feedback. And you can say, oh, I did it this way, and another person may say, oh, I did it that way. And then you could discuss which may be the better approach to that. And during these things, um, we will, as staff, will walk around, now virtually, so there will always be a couple of staff in each tutorial session, um, and uh, join your breakout groups and uh, answer questions you may have. You say, oh, the question is not totally clear to us. Could you clarify this? We are more than happy to do that. And the point is you can use the feedback from these meetings to improve your essay draft and make it better. So you can go home and revise your essay draft if you want to. The point is these four essay drafts they are not marked. They are just for you to draft an essay, work on it, improve it, and learn from it. Now the second part now is the part which is marked. And for this you pick two of the essays of your four drafts you think which are the best essays. And those two um, you can still revise them and somewhere in, I don't know when the submission deadline is, March, April, towards the end of the module, you submit them as a final submission on Wiseflow. And these two essays will then be marked and be your grade. So you will have two essays, each 500 words, on two different topics, um, which then constitute your grade. And you will have a chance to practice these two essays and to improve them and get feedback from your fellow students on them. Okay, so what's the marking scheme for that? Um, so because we really would like you to submit the draft essays on Blackboard Learn, each submission you will get 2.5% towards your final grade. Just the submission. The quality of submission doesn't matter. We look through them and see whether it is a proper draft and uh, then you would just get 2.5% awarded for each submission. So all four together can sum up to 10% of the final grade. In the second part, um, when you finally submit two of your best essays, each essay is 45% of the final mark. So summing up to 90%. Now let me illustrate what the impact of submitting the drafts might be. So as we said, each essay is 45%, the final ones you submit on Wiseflow, of the final mark. So suppose you get a 65, a B in both of them. So here you can see the marking scheme 65 is a B and equivalent to, a, uh, to one degree. Now, the final grade you get in the module is influenced by how many drafts you have submitted. If you submitted all four drafts, then you get 65 is your grade here, and this is worth 90%, so times 0.9 plus 
10% from all four drafts, you get a 68.5, a B plus. So just by submitting drafts, which are not marked, which don't have to be brilliant, but where you just have to make a draft attempt at writing, will pull up your mark. If you submitted three drafts, you stay on a B, like this one. Same when you do two drafts, uh, you still stay on a B. However, note that this is only for the example of 65. If you have some something else, this might be different. So it doesn't mean always, if you submit two or three drafts, you will stay on the grade you got in your two main essays. Uh, that might be different. It's just an example to illustrate. If you only submitted one of the four drafts, it will pull you down to a B-. And if you submitted no draft at all, it will pull you down even further and you will only achieve a C+, although what you have submitted on Wiseflow was a 65 and a B. So I really strongly recommend submit four drafts. It's good practice for you. And um, you then, in the end, have the choice of four essays to think, okay, which one is the best one? Which two do I pick to polish and submit on Wiseflow for the best possible grade? And collect also the additional 10% from submitting all drafts. Okay, so sorry for the postgraduates that you have to listen through that all. Um, we are nearly done. This synoptic assessment in biological and cognitive psychology, and this is somewhat for your postgraduates as well, because you get the essay questions, and they are also synoptic essay questions, so, so you should pay attention here as well. And um, so the questions are phrased in a way uh, where we really, where you need to rely on your knowledge from the two modules, biological and cognitive psychology, to answer them. And we really want you to pull together the knowledge from both and not focus solely on one or the other. So you need to integrate both. If you stick to solely cognitive or solely biology, you will be marked down for that because it's not a synoptic answer. And as I said, because the questions are phrased in that way, if you did that, you have not properly answered the question. Okay. So, coming back to now specific cognitive psychology, what you need to know to answer these questions is basically given in the textbook, in the Gobert textbook, and the relevant chapters. We will see them in the next part of this lecture and the content of the lectures. So, if you listen to these panopto recordings and read through the chapters, you have all the knowledge you know you need to know to answer the essay questions we will we will give you. Okay, um, do you have any questions? Of course, um, you can't ask me any questions right now directly. However, uh, this is my point to uh, point you to the discussion forum on BBL. And there's one discussion forum and I will check that regularly. And I would really encourage you to post your questions there. And I think if students engage in it and, and, and are lively and, and post questions and you can help each other, then this makes a good resource for people to, to look for and it's a certain amount of interactivity so that you don't feel you sit alone and, and do this. And this discussion forum, uh, I will post some questions uh, to, to support your learning where you can think about and post your answers. But also you can really um, ask anything you want to. It can be administrative, like, okay, what's the topic of this week? Um, where do we meet uh, online? Is it Zoom or, or MS Teams or BBL Ultra? Um, I will give that information in due course. Um, it can be questions. I didn't understand that particular model. Can somebody help explaining me? Stuff like that. You know, it should be really, hopefully, a vibrant learning resource where you can communicate. And I will also always uh, check on it. I, I plan to do so at least daily, and if it's lively, more than once a day, um, to support that discussion and answer questions and things like that. So I put a little bit stuff already on there, so feel free to have a look. Okay, thank you very much uh, to lis for listening to the end of this first recording, and um, yes, I will start the second one soon, and what I would recommend, if you learn from home and sit all the time, 
now it's probably a good break to do a good uh, stretch. Um, if you have a coffee, have a coffee if it's not 8 in the evening or something. Or a good tea. Treat yourself a little bit. Have a break before you go on to the next part. Okay, thanks a lot for listening and see you soon.